Cord clamping is the process of applying a clamp to the umbilical cord and cutting it after birth. This procedure stops the blood flow from the placenta to the newborn, marking the end of placental circulation. Blood flow in the umbilical arteries and vein continues for several minutes after birth. The timing of cord clamping can significantly impact the amount of blood transferred to the baby, known as placental transfusion. Delayed cord clamping involves waiting 30 seconds to several minutes before clamping and cutting the cord. This practice allows for additional blood transfer from the placenta to the newborn, potentially offering various benefits. Delayed cord clamping allows for a significant increase in the newborn's blood volume with at least 12 milliliters per kilogram transferred in the first 30 seconds after birth. This additional blood can have profound effects on the infant's health. The increased blood volume leads to higher hematocrit levels, which can improve oxygen delivery to tissues and organs during the crucial transition to extrauter in life. Improved iron stores in infancy can result from delayed cord clamping. This is particularly important for preventing iron deficiency anemia, which can have long-lasting effects on cognitive and motor development. The enhanced iron status may contribute to better developmental outcomes, potentially reducing iron deficiency-related issues in early childhood. It's important to understand that while delayed cord clamping offers numerous benefits, there are certain conditions where it may not be advisable. Firstly, delayed cord clamping may not be suitable in situations where there are conditions that compromise the availability of blood in the placenta. For example, maternal hemodynamic instability is a condition where the mother's blood pressure or circulation is unstable, often due to significant blood loss or other complications. In such cases, the placenta may not be able to provide the necessary blood flow to the newborn, making immediate cord clamping necessary to prioritize the mother's health and stabilize her condition. Another condition is placental abruption where the placenta detaches from the uterine wall before delivery. This can lead to severe bleeding and reduced blood flow to the baby, necessitating immediate medical intervention and cord clamping to manage the situation effectively. Placenta previa is another contraindication. This condition occurs when the placenta covers the cervix, leading to potential bleeding during delivery. In such cases, immediate cord clamping may be required to quickly address any complications and ensure the safety of both the mother and the baby. Additionally, there are scenarios where the infant may need immediate resuscitation. If the newborn is not breathing or showing signs of distress, healthcare providers need to act quickly to provide life-saving interventions. Delaying cord clamping in these situations could hinder the timely administration of necessary medical care, which is crucial for the infant's survival and well-being. Delayed cord clamping in term infants, while beneficial in many ways, does come with some potential risks. First, there is an increased risk of jaundice as delayed cord clamping can lead to higher levels of bilirubin. This may require phototherapy to manage. Next, there is an increased risk for polycythemia or an elevated red blood cell count. This can cause the blood to thicken. While the risk is relatively low, it can lead to complications with the respiratory and circulatory system. The additional blood volume may contribute to respiratory distress, particularly if the infant has difficulty clearing fetal lung fluid. However, this risk is generally considered minimal. In cases where immediate resuscitation is needed, waiting to perform delayed cord clamping may delay the initiation of resuscitation. This is particularly relevant for infants who are not vigorous at birth. Healthcare providers must carefully assess each case to determine the appropriate approach, ensuring the mother and newborn's safety and health. In certain situations, immediate cord clamping may be necessary to ensure the best outcomes for both mother and baby. By evaluating the specific circumstances of each birth, we can make informed decisions that prioritize the well-being of both patients. Healthcare providers must carefully assess each case to determine the most appropriate approach, ensuring the safety and health of both the mother and the newborn. In certain situations, immediate cord clamping may be necessary to ensure the best outcomes for both mother and baby. By evaluating the specific circumstances of each birth, we can make informed decisions that prioritize the well-being of both patients. One of the key benefits of delayed cord clamping for preterm infants is the reduced need for blood pressure support. In the critical early hours and days of life, maintaining stable blood pressure is essential for preterm infants. The extra blood from delayed cord clamping helps support cardiovascular stability, reducing the need for medications or other interventions to maintain adequate blood pressure. Another significant benefit is the lower incidence of blood transfusions. Preterm infants often require blood transfusions due to their lower blood volumes and higher risk of anemia. 
by allowing more blood to transfer from the placenta, delayed cord clamping can help maintain adequate blood levels, reducing the need for transfusions and the associated risks and complications. Lastly, delayed cord clamping is associated with a potential improvement in overall survival rates for preterm infants. The additional blood volume can help stabilize these infants, reducing the need for intensive care and improving their chances of survival. This is particularly important for very preterm infants who face numerous challenges in the early stages of life. In summary, delayed cord clamping offers several critical benefits for preterm infants, including reduced need for blood pressure support, lower incidence of blood transfusions, and potential improvement in overall survival rates. These benefits highlight the importance of considering delayed cord clamping as a standard practice in the care of preterm infants whenever possible. While delayed cord clamping offers significant benefits for preterm infants, it's crucial to carefully weigh these benefits against potential risks. The decision to delay clamping should be made on a case-by-case -case basis, considering the infant's gestational age, condition at birth, and immediate medical needs. For preterm infants, particularly those born at less than 28 weeks of gestation, there is an increased risk of intraventricular hemorrhage. This risk is especially pronounced when cord milking is performed. Intraventricular hemorrhage involves bleeding into the brain's ventricular system, which can lead to serious complications. Preterm infants are also at risk for hyperbilirubinemia and polycythemia due to the high blood volume transferred during delayed cord clamping. Hyperbilirubinemia can lead to jaundice, while polycythemia involves an elevated concentration of red blood cells, increasing blood viscosity, and potentially leading to complications such as blood clots. Another concern is the risk of respiratory distress during the transition from intrauterine to extrauterine life. The additional blood volume can sometimes lead to fluid retention in the lungs, complicating the infant's ability to breathe effectively. Performing delayed cord clamping may also delay the time-sensitive need for resuscitation efforts. If the preterm infant requires immediate medical intervention to support breathing or circulation, delaying cord clamping could hinder the timely administration of these critical interventions. Additionally, there is a risk that the preterm infant may become hypothermic during the delay in cord clamping. Preterm infants are particularly vulnerable to temperature instability, and the handling involved in delayed cord clamping can increase the risk of hypothermia. Cord milking involves squeezing and pushing blood within the umbilical cord towards the newborn's abdomen before clamping. This technique can be particularly useful when immediate cord cutting is necessary, such as in cases where the newborn requires urgent medical intervention. By milking the cord, we can potentially provide some of the benefits of delayed clamping, such as increased blood volume and improved iron stores. However, it's important to note that cord milking should be avoided in babies born at less than 28 weeks gestation. This is because very preterm infants are at an increased risk of brain injury, specifically intraventricular hemorrhage, due to the rapid increase in blood volume from cord milking. It's also crucial to understand that cord milking is not a replacement for delayed cord clamping. While it can provide some benefits, it does not offer the same advantages as delayed cord clamping, particularly in terms of long-term outcomes. Ongoing studies are exploring the risks and benefits of cord milking in preterm newborns and those requiring resuscitation. This research is essential to better understand how to safely and effectively use cord milking in clinical practice. Katheria et al. found that among non-vigorous infants born at 35-42 weeks gestation, umbilical cord milking did not reduce NICU admissions based on predefined criteria. However, infants who underwent umbilical cord milking had several positive outcomes. No increase in the risk of neurodevelopmental impairment. Higher hemoglobin levels required less cardiorespiratory support in the delivery room, experienced a lower incidence of moderate to severe hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, HIE, received less therapeutic hypothermia. These results are promising and suggest that umbilical cord milking in non-vigorous infants may be beneficial compared to early cord clamping. Cord milking presents an intriguing alternative when delayed cord clamping is not feasible. However, it's crucial to understand its limitations and potential risks, especially in very preterm infants. Healthcare providers should stay informed about the latest research in this rapidly evolving field to make the best decisions for their patients. Here are the current guidelines and recommendations for delayed cord clamping from key health organizations. Firstly, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists recommends delaying cord clamping for 30 to 60 seconds in vigorous term and preterm infants. 
This guideline aims to balance the benefits of increased blood volume with the potential risks associated with delayed clamping. By waiting for this period, we can ensure that the newborn receives the additional blood volume that can support their transition to extraterrene life, while also being mindful of any potential complications. Next, the Neonatal Resuscitation Program guidelines recommends delaying umbilical cord clamping for at least 30-60 seconds for most term and preterm infants who are vigorous at birth and do not require resuscitation. Lastly, the World Health Organization recommends delayed cord clamping not earlier than one minute after birth for improved maternal and infant health and nutrition outcomes. This global recommendation recognizes the widespread benefits of the practice, including better iron stores and reduced risk of anemia in infants, as well as improved maternal health outcomes. There is no consensus on the best approach to cord clamping for non-vigorous newborns, however, Placental transfusion can be beneficial for non-vigorous newborns who are at risk of asphyxiation-related mortality and morbidities. Cord milking had been proposed as an alternative when delayed cord clamping cannot be performed. Many organizations are cautious about recommending cord milking but acknowledge it may be beneficial when delayed cord clamping cannot occur. However, there is agreement to avoid cord milking in infants less than 28 weeks gestation. Ongoing studies are required to better understand the risks and benefits of cord milking, particularly in preterm infants. The practical considerations for implementing delayed cord clamping ensure a smooth and effective delivery. Pre-delivery planning. It's essential to discuss the cord clamping plans with the healthcare team and the parents before delivery. This discussion should include the intended approach to cord clamping and any potential need for adjustments based on the clinical situation. Ensuring that all team members are aware of the plan helps to coordinate efforts and prepare for any contingencies during delivery. During the delivery, it's crucial to closely monitor both maternal and fetal status. Be prepared to adapt the cord clamping strategy based on immediate needs and any complications that arise. For example, if the mother experiences hemodynamic instability or if the newborn requires immediate resuscitation, the plan may need to be adjusted to prioritize their safety. Immediate postpartum, after the baby is born, assess the newborn while the cord remains intact. If appropriate, initiate skin-to-skin -skin contact between the mother and the baby. This practice can help stabilize the newborn and promote bonding. Additionally, be prepared for potential complications such as jaundice or polycythemia in the following days as these conditions can arise from the increased blood volume transferred during delayed cord clamping. Follow-up care, in the days following the birth, monitor the infant for signs of jaundice or other complications. It's also important to provide education to the parents about the potential benefits and risks of the chosen cord clamping approach. This education helps parents understand what to expect and how to care for their newborn effectively. By carefully planning and monitoring each stage of the process, we can maximize the benefits of delayed cord clamping while minimizing potential risks. Delayed cord clamping offers significant benefits for both term and preterm infants, but it's essential to carefully consider the risks. Individualized decision-making is crucial to ensure the best outcomes for each patient. For preterm infants, delayed cord clamping can improve cardiovascular stability, reduce the need for blood transfusions, and enhance survival rates. Major health organizations now recommend delayed cord clamping in most cases, reflecting the growing body of evidence supporting its benefits. However, ongoing research is necessary to refine techniques, explore long-term outcomes, and optimize approaches for different patient populations. As healthcare professionals, staying informed about the latest research and guidelines on cord clamping is essential. By carefully weighing the benefits and risks for each patient, we can provide optimal care that supports the best possible outcomes for newborns and their families. 